Hello my friends and thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. So after Fuego in Guatemala, now Pacaya volcano erupts. Meanwhile, 99 dead following Fuego volcanic eruption and, and they found more bodies. And so they're thinking that we're looking at somewhere between two and 300 more most likely um, killed in that eruption. And now Pacaya is erupting. And so we see more and more activity as we go. And so Pacaya has erupted with explosions and lava flows stretching over 50 meters and 20 meters wide on the northern flank of the volcano. And, uh, you know, which is nothing compared to what happened at Fuego, but it just shows you the activity that we have going on right now. So we are definitely in very, very active times, and all this is adding to the particulates in the air, which is just going to increase the moisture and increase the flooding that we're seeing, and it's also going to increase the rapid transition into the grand solar minimum and bringing those cold temperatures once we get back into the fall and the winter. So Kilauea has really been very, very uh, systematic and steady right now. It's in a pattern of ebbing and flowing at, with these eruptions. And so right now, if we take a quick peek, we will see that we're looking at 242 earthquakes right now in 24 hours. And so that's relatively low for what it's been doing. It will go ahead and start to rise up, get up into that over the 300 threshold, up probably around 400 or so, and then boom, we have a volcanic eruption somewhere between 5 and 5.4, 5.5 in magnitude, and then the earthquakes will go down, and then they'll start to rise again. So it's, it's in this cycle, and... At least the USGS is showing that the size of these volcanic eruptions is pretty similar. And, you know, again, do we trust them? Probably not. Uh, but it's an interesting pattern that we're seeing. So we see the diamond right here. The diamond is a 5.4 volcanic eruption, six kilometers southwest of Kilauea. And you can see the depths, negative 1.1 kilometers. And so, as we can see, everything at the moment is clustered pretty much in the normal area. So, what we were seeing before over towards Mauna Loa, we don't see at the moment. And if we just pop out and take a look at what else is happening, uh, fairly active. We have a 5.3 over here in the Solomon Islands. A 5.0 in Papua New Guinea. Another 4.9 in Papua New Guinea, 4.3 over in Indonesia, 4.8 in the Philippines, 4.1 over in Guam. In Japan, we have a 4.2. It's pretty deep, 426 kilometers deep, 4.6 over in Japan. And then 4.2 over in Chile. In the Tristan de Cuna region, we have a 5.1. As we do every day, 4.8 in Mayotte, somewhere in between 4.5 and 5.5 every day over in this East African rift. And then in India, we have a 4.4. And typical swarming going on in California. And same thing with Alaska. One of them that stuck out to me over here was this a 2.3 Soda Springs, Idaho at negative 1.8 kilometers. So that's probably somewhere around six, 7,000 feet uh, above sea level. So it, it could be indicative of, of some sort of magma flow. Just, just something to keep in mind. And as usual, there's flooding going on. This is what we have all the time now. This is Oklahoma. Flooding causing major issues for drivers all through Oklahoma City. And, you know, still there's so much saturated ground everywhere. And this article is basically, it's saying coastal flooding likely to continue breaking records. And now they're saying coastal flooding, although, you know, the flooding we saw in Asheville, North Carolina, has nothing to do with the coast. So 
I don't know, this one felt like they're trying to spin it on global warming still. As they typically do, they're saying high tide flooding happens twice as often in coastal areas as it did 30 years ago due to rising sea levels, according to a new report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And of course, you know, NOAA, we, we look at everything from NOAA like we do from NASA and uh, from the USGS, always with a little suspicion. Uh, as to you know what they want to sell us and what do they want to hide but yeah I mean we do definitely have record floods going on but obviously what we're seeing in so many areas that are inland um, doesn't have anything to do with the high tides on the shore and what we're seeing is directly related to the grand solar minimum and basically the magnetospheres declined all the particulates going up in the air from the volcanoes it's it's not something that al gore was talking about so surge in solar power is actually flooding australia's national grid so this is all about they have too much energy going into the grid because so many people have gone to solar and so many companies have gone to solar well, that doesn't seem like a problem at all. Uh, definitely a, a good thing, in tapping into the solar. And um, it's wonderful to be off-grid when you can. And I know I made the comments before about, like, in some places, it's actually illegal in the United States to be off-grid. And uh, that is actually the case in some communities. Not everywhere in the United States, just some local communities some cities you know in some states it's actually illegal for you to be off the grid and um, you know that there's just something wrong about that and solar power is definitely something that we should look into of course in many areas you know we're going to be getting a lot more cloud cover so other alternatives um, should definitely be utilized as well And over here, now this was the big statement from NASA today. So Curiosity rover unearths building blocks of life in 3 billion old organic matter on Mars. So they're not saying that they found life, they found the building blocks for life. So as this says right here, researchers cannot yet say whether their discovery stems from life or from a more mundane geological process. However, we're in a really good position to move forward looking for signs of life, said a NASA biochemist and leading author of a study, Jennifer Eigenbrode, uh, published Thursday in a peer-reviewed journal of science. And so the findings were also remarkable in that they showed that organic material can't be preserved for billions of years in the harsh Martian climate. The material was discovered by the Mars Curiosity rover, which has been collecting data on the red planet since August of 2012. The organic molecules were found in Gale Crater, believed to once contain a shallow lake the size of Florida's Lake Okeechobee. For the past six years, Curiosity has sifted samples of soil and ground up rock for signs of organic molecules the complex carbon change that on Earth formed the building blocks of life. Past detections have been so faint that they could be just contamination. Now samples from two different drill sites on the ancient lake bed have yielded complex organic molecules that look strikingly similar to the goopy fossilized building blocks of oil and gas on Earth. The rover also discovered traces of methane in the Martian atmosphere, which was reported in a second paper of science and this is significant because most methane on Earth, for instance, comes from biological sources. The detection of organic molecules and methane on Mars has far-ranging implications in light of potential past life on Mars. So, the Curiosity has shown that Gale Crater was habitable about 3.5 billion years ago with conditions comparable to those on early Earth where life evolved around that time. The question of whether life might have originated or existed on Mars is a lot more opportune now that we know that organic molecules were present on its surface at that time. 
So with these new findings, Mars is telling us to stay the course and keep searching for evidence of life. I'm confident that our ongoing and planned missions will unlock even more breathtaking discoveries on the red planet. So what do you guys make of that? For me, it, it, it really makes me almost laugh because I think it's, it's just so strikingly obvious that there's life there, there was, there was life here that was probably pre-human, and there's probably life all over the galaxy and the universe and the multiverse. Life is, is not just, uh, you know, this tiny little pocket that we have on Earth. To think that we're all there is is just insane. It makes absolutely no sense at all to think that this is all that there is. That's just, it just is so illogical. And, and in fact, like again, as we look at the Vedas, you know, they talk about all different types of humanoid species in the galaxy with, you know, thousands of different humanoid species, just humanoid in the galaxy. And we have traditions throughout all the indigenous people of the star beings that come to the earth. So it's obvious there's extraterrestrials and uh, it's, it's kind of comical, really.